Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the really powerful new features inside of Comfy UI, the reactor or the fast face swap. This is amazing technology and uh, I've played around with it for a while and it's a bit difficult to get going, but it's really worth uh, taking a look at. The software allows us to change a person's face using very, very powerful models. And it has a wonderful, really wonderful work flow that you can uh, get used to. Now, before we get into this, one of the things I have to mention is that the I recently did a video on how to install Stable Diffusion with Comfy UI in seven, seven minutes. This video contains some information which I will have to amend. So if you follow this video, you may have a little bit of things that you need to change. And I'll come to that, particularly about installing Python and how we work with Python inside of this new situation inside of this new scenario now the software itself the technology is amazing and i'm really really fighting to i'm fighting like muhammad ali to try to stop becoming addicted to this stuff but i do have a couple of really important things to tell you we'll start off with the learning generative ai with sdxl stable diffusion and comfy ui this course has been going strong and if you want to join this course, it's for beginners. I'll have a major discount in the description. The course is one of several, and you can, if you finish this course, go on to study some of the more advanced features inside of Comfy UI. Now, speaking of Comfy UI, I had to install Comfy UI again for this particular project, and that was because I had a lot of error messages when I was trying to get it to work. You can do that with Comfy UI. You can have many, many different installations on the same PC because we can have a standalone installation of Comfy UI, you don't necessarily always have to work with exactly the same one. It's exactly what I found that I needed to do. I needed to install a completely new version. And that new version actually ended up working with a newer version of Python. So one of the things I mentioned in a previous video is that you should install Python 3.10.6 and that was an attempt to try to keep things really, really synchronized and compatible between different versions of Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion in Comfy UI, Stable Diffusion in Automatic 11.11 and so on and so on. What I found with this software was that I really needed to have Python 3.11 installed. So I uninstalled 3.10.6 and I, I installed the latest version of 3.11. Another really useful thing is Visual Studio. This seems to be a really important thing to get started and uh, you might want to download this before downloading the other stuff, it's, it's up to you. But the thing that I found really useful was having Visual Studio Build Tools 2022. And you get this with down downloading the Visual Studio, the community version. So this one and that one, both of those installed. And if you have them already, make sure that they're updated. Now the Reactor, page has got instructions on installation but to get started if you're new to comfy ui uh, this is going to be a really really difficult project to to work with if you are new but uh, you can come to the code page you can click on the copy button and inside of comfy ui we navigate down to the comfy ui folder custom nodes and then we right click and choose open git bash here and if you followed my installation video you should know how to actually set this up to get the software installed, we come to this window, type in git clone, and then I'm going to paste the address that we just copied, hit return, and it should start uh, installing this. It doesn't, doesn't take too long at all. Now, sometimes I have to say when you're using this particular software, you may find it conflicts with the version of Python, one of the one of the other versions of Python. And in that situation, you can do something different, which is to right click. And we don't have it here, so you can come up here, just type into the address there, CMD. And this brings up this window, and here is where you type in git clone and then paste the address. Now for this project, I actually found I preferred working with this terminal here. Now, after a while, it will install properly, but you can also install and use the Comfy UI Manager. So we'll maybe take a quick look at how to use that a bit later on. 
Now, once everything is installed, keep an eye on the on the command window whilst everything is installing. You'll probably get some error messages. But once everything has installed, you might want to restart Comfy UI a couple of times. Come to the reactor window and then double click on the install.bat. That will begin another phase of installation and that will probably come up with a couple of errors as well. Just make a note of what errors you get. Now, if you do get errors, the installation page for Comfy UI Reactor Node is your friend. It has a lot of useful tips. We've got tips on stuff that you might be need to be aware of about not safe for work stuff. We've got troubleshooting tips as well. And these I found very helpful. This is where I first really came across the idea that I needed to be on 3.11. The other thing to really, really emphasize is the usage. So the disclaimer here is very important. It's really, really important that you read the stuff about the ethics here. They've got a lot of concerns about the ethical use of face swapping technology. There's also some very important stuff here, legal stuff about the pre-trained models. Some of these models are automatically downloaded. And some of these do not have a commercial license. So they are open source, but if you want to use them commercially, you may need to develop your own models for this type of work. So they are non-commercial. You're going to use this for research. And obviously with the ethical concerns, the, the, the licensing is going to be a bit tougher. We had fairly tough licensing when SDXL first came out. I think we had a, we had a non-commercial license for that as well. So be careful how you use it. Make sure you read everything. Now, once you've got it installed, you should be able to come here and uh, either add a node and we're just working with the basic setup here, the basic default setup, uh, Stable Diffusion 1.5. And I think we go to Image, Post Processors, we should have reactor fast face swap that gives us this little window here this little window and with this window we can do amazing stuff we can bring in a source image and uh, we can load an image <laughs> so this is an image i've used before and we can drag out a, an input image And we can say, okay, let's produce an output image. Let's have a preview. And when we hit run, this section here will run all on its own and produce a combination of these two. Let's try that and see what happens. Okay. Now it's looking a little bit rough. So I'm going to change the restore model. Now, whilst we're doing this, it's a good idea maybe that I look at the manager and give you some idea of how to use the manager if you've not used it before. We need to go to install custom nodes and inside of install custom nodes, you will see it something like this and you're going to have to search for the things that you want. I think we could just go ahead and search for React. And it will give us the thing that we need to install. It will have an install button there. Just install that and restart. And we can also go and let's cancel. Let's close out here. We can also go and install models. Now I'm going to clear the search and we can put in. So this is a little bit better. We've got the inswapper, which is the one of the models from Insight Face. Uh, this one has been installed already. We have a uh, face restore co code for former. That one has been installed and you just click on before they're installed. Let's say what, what you would do. Uh, let's choose installed all. And what we can do is just basically click on the install button, find the button, find the, the particular model that we need. So it's going to be one of the face restore. Uh, in Swapper is the one that we're using. And you may find that you need to work with the the, the location, the exact location of where they should be stored. Um, sometimes you might need to go and check online to see exactly where the file that you've selected uh, needs to be put inside of the Comfy UI folder. But with this one, I found that it actually installed before. I actually installed it here. It was installed during the process when I was initially installing the software. 
Now for this particular edit, we can choose the code former and let's queue prompt and it will just process this so that the image will look a little bit neater. So what we've now got is a combination of this woman and this woman in this image here. So that was a fairly straightforward use of the software. And what I've done is instead of actually bringing in two new images, I've actually decided one of the images is going to come from stable diffusion itself. So we create a stable diffusion and then we link that particular image to the, to, to the menu here. You can see here that the image output goes to the save image here as usual. And then we've connected this guy here so that it's connecting to the input image here. So the input image is now coming from stable diffusion. It's going to be this image. And then we take this guy here, the image that we opened up in the same way we opened up these guys. And then we opened up an image and that image is the one that we're using to actually manipulate this image here to produce this image. And you can see some of the results that I got before. That's one of the images. So here we're using a prompt, which is beautiful Swedish adolescent face smiling. And you'll notice with this image here, it's taking this beautiful girl with the bright eyes and it's giving her the, the, the face of the older woman. We can go back a bit. I put in a child. Again, we've got really bright eyes for the stable diffusion. And it's given us this older looking woman by combining it with this face. It's really amazing how it does this. Now with this one, the results were pretty amazing. We had these three African girls and I asked it to combine the, the, the image here with this image here. And you can actually see this girl's face reflected, especially with this girl. You can see the, the features are exactly the same as her features, even though the head, head is turned. So I had a lot of fun with this. And most of the time, what I found was that the image that was being produced here was quite a lot better than the image that was coming out of stable diffusion.